Uh, in my opinion, internet freedom in Nigeria uh, means access to internet, uh, access to upload information onto the, into the uh, medium, and um, access to undertake transactions. <laughs> Can we, take, can we take You want to take the call? No, no, no. I want, I want to put yeah, we'll redo it. We'll redo it. Okay. If you could say you know, you, you're from. Excuse me. Let me just put this up. Okay. So that's my name. My name is Tode Akoni, and I'm from Nigeria. Internet freedom in, in Nigeria, in my own opinion, uh, implies access to the medium of, to the, medium of the internet. Um, freedom to undertake transactions on the internet, uh, freedom to upload information onto the medium. Um, these freedoms for some time until a few weeks back uh, have remained intact, but recently uh, the government of Nigeria began to tamper with the freedoms. And um, the, the first most conspicuous signal we got was the decision of the government to contract an Israeli government, an Israeli company called Elbit called Systems to begin to spy on the activities of the citizens on the, inter on, uh, on the internet. Uh, this naturally attracted criticism from the citizens, and in particular from a coalition of uh, about 11 civil society organizations, you know, uh, ranging from CITAD in Kano to PIN in Abuja, uh, telling government that this is absolutely uh, uh, uncalled for. The groups made it clear that besides the fact that this violates citizens' access to information, it's also a violation of the constitutional provision for citizens' entitlement to privacy. Um, government did not want to listen, but um, uh, apparently after considerable pressure, the National Assembly felt it should intervene. And now the National Assembly uh, has uh, waded in and made sure that um, government could not go ahead with this decision. So for now, I think the contract is, uh, has been suspended. Uh, but the same coalition in the public statement that they issued claimed that the signing on of Elbit Systems was actually not the very beginning of government's intention to interfere with the freedom of the citizens on the internet. That there had been certain other subtle moves in the past. Uh, which go citizens ought to have um, uh, been, been aware of, uh, which, of course, government secretly had kept away from, from the people. Um, and true to that, as a researcher, I've also had to ascertain that uh, way back 2008, 2009, government had felt so much concern about citizens' uh, feelings and disposition to it, such that in 2009, the government of Nigeria actually voted as much as five million US dollars to support or cultivate what it called government-friendly websites. The government had felt that there were a number, there were too many websites that were anti-government. And so the best thing to um, 
polish up the image of this same government was to set up pro-government websites. Um, but the issue, the question, if you ask me, is how many websites are there on the internet that are Nigeria inclined? And then you begin to talk of government-friendly websites. What I'm trying to point out is that the five million US dollars voted for the pro-government websites was just another window by government functionaries to dip their arms into the till and fleece the rest of us. Mm. Uh, I, 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 and and, and um, it's also painful yes. that where, if, if they could do that way back in 2009, this is 2013, it's not unlikely that the votes this year might have gone to 10 times of what they voted in 2009, meaning that this year, 2013, perhaps they will have voted as much as 50,000 US dollars. Yes, if you ask me, I will tell you, yes, there are a few websites that are critical of government, but we can count them on, on our fingertips. You talk of uh, Sahara Reporters, you talk of um, some of us uh, 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 like um, Premium Times, but these are even websites that only make efforts to tell the truth about Nigeria, about the Nigerian government. But because government is not used to doing well, because it's, this government is what you could call a pseudo-democratic government, it never felt it should take kindly to these websites. Mm -hmm. And so it felt that the best way, the best strategy it should adopt was to cultivate and build what it called pro-government websites. Wow, what a story. Thank you, excellent. Briefly, could you just tell us what you think is the biggest threat to internet freedom? Yeah. Oh, the, the big threat? Yeah. Uh, let's, wait, the, let's, let's wait for these guys to, okay. to pass. So, like, just the question would be, you just say, the biggest threat to internet freedom in Nigeria is... No. Yes. Um, the biggest threat to internet freedom in Nigeria, uh, if you ask me, is the recent very sad development in the United States, you know, of... Um, the United States government, you know, uh, going behind doors to have access to all the citizens, all citizens' communications on all those, on all such platforms as Google, Microsoft, and so on and so forth. Why I say this is because now there is a ready example for developing democracies like Nigeria to cite. If you guys, citizens, want to complain about our interference with the internet, what do you say about the big brother, the, the biggest, the, 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 you know, the, 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 the oldest democracy in the United States? So if it's happening in the United States, why not the rest of us? After all, it's, already, it's also already happening in India. And uh, it's not too cool in Hungary. In Turkey is another bad case. So what are we talking about? Nigeria has... Uh, an already terrible example.